Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Nice one. Um, so, concerning the funeral of my father, uh, he died two and a half years ago. February 2022. And culture... I don't know, we celebrate the death than the living. We spend on the death than even the needy. And uh, I was told not to even announce it, but I did um, until they come up with a funeral. Um, yesterday they had a, should I call it one week? <laughs> Two and a half year celebration. They call it one week yesterday. And it was like a deba. <laughs> oh my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, we have been called to duty today. Amen. And we thank God for that opportunity again. Um, even the fact that you are here, it's a great opportunity. And to listen to the voice of God is also a great opportunity. Amen. So, um, like we usually do all protocols, but at this time, I will not. I want to uh, appreciate the leadership for, uh, for the opportunity. You see, when, most of the time, when the plant comes out, sometimes the presiding elder, together with the leadership, at the discretion of the presiding elder, or maybe together with the district pastor, they can swap you, they can move you, they can take your name out. Yes. So if I have the opportunity to stand here, I just want to say thank you, bro. Amen. And to brag of you, welcome from Ghana. Amen. Amen. Uh, we know you are loaded with uh, Ojakrum Oja, Oja blessings, so we will receive it before you go. So this year, we've been talking about unleash, 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 and then it says unleash. The people of God unleashed to transform their world. And we've been talking about the characteristics of the church. The church as a people of God. Raising godly families. Raising Christ-like believers. Unleashing holistic witness. Do you remember these topics? Are you sure? Okay, so... Sacrificial giving and tithing. That one I remember. Then we also have talked about authority of the kingdom, the power of faith, etc. This week, we started talking, in fact, it's the district program, Unleashed to Break Camp and Advance. Unleashed to Break Camp and Advance. Unleashed to break camp and advance. Not breaking the camp and stay, but advance. So back home in those days, during when it's coming to Christmas, the, the kind of chicken we rear in the house, the home made, Christmas time, they vanish. I don't know for some reason who has taught the dates and calendar or Christmas, they'll vanish. They will, you'll not see them in the house. After Christmas, they, they, they come home. So this is what we do. Maybe four or five days to Christmas, we put them in a, either we tie them to a wall, tied, anything that will keep the, the chicken not to move. And then there are some chicken, maybe by divine intervention, we don't kill them. This is what happens. When you release the chicken, they will stay there. They think they are, they are still... Being on, uh, <laughs> even though you have unleashed that chicken, it, yeah, because they think that something is holding them. Today's topic it says that break camp and advance. Hallelujah! Amen. Break camp. The word break. When I was coming, um, fortunately I had a, 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 somebody who drive me, so I looked through the word camp, uh, break. Break means destroy, split, 
That means that split whatever is holding you and advance. Destroy whatever is holding you and advance. PIWC, break camp and advance. Amen. Amen. Let's read from Deuteronomy 1, 6 to 8. To be honest with you, I've had great speakers ahead of me um, this week. Friday, we had a, an, an awesome time with the Lord at um, the new premise for Norcross District. Somebody help me read. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, and the coastal plain. Go to the land of all the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. Amen. Amen. Um, the NIV Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, Lord God, we thank you so much for this morning, an opportunity to hear your voice and to dine with you, Lord Jesus. Who are we that you are so mindful of that you call us your own? You call us the chosen generation. Thank you, Jesus, for that, this opportunity. As we have come, we have come with an expectation. We pray that, Lord God, you will meet us at, our point, at the point of our expectation and release us, O oh God, to do great works. In Jesus' name, amen. So the, the, the story of um, that happened in Horeb, um, the NLT says Sinai, Mount Sinai. Um, NI, NIV says Horeb. This is the place where the Israelites received the Ten Commandments. And after receiving the Ten Commandments, what again? I mean, game over. Yeah, we have to be comfortable here. And so they settled at Horeb. They made themselves very comfortable over there. In fact, started breeding their, 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 their animals, um, also giving birth. Generation came, increase in numbers. They were so comfortable. But the goal was a place called Cana. They were so comfortable. PRWC, I want to say something to you. With permission from presiding, we are so comfortable. Where we are, at our workplace, look, Apostle Amakun once, once told us that if you have a CNA, just get the, a certification, advance, just one, one year certification. And see how your salary will, will look like. Advance a little. We, we, we are not saying that everybody will be a doctor. We are not saying that everybody will be a mathematician. But wherever you find yourself, just a little advance. Don't be a little push. Thank you. Don't stay where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Most of the time, we relate these things to spiritual things, which is good. But... On the physical, please, please, don't be comfortable. As old as I am, I still take examination every year, certifications. I renew mine almost every two years. So I have about five, and it is every other year like two. Hallelujah. My age. Oh, I'm old. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, I started a new project, and then there is this young guy who he talks his we are age group, <laughs> and he has a pain in the shoulder. And then he he said that oh you are young so you can raise your hand. I'm look at him. I'm like you're my baby. You don't know my son is your age. 
Hallelujah. I'm old. <laughs> but I am not comfortable. I am not sitting at work. Look, master, so what? Look, when you go to the job site, they don't care about what you have learned in school. They think about, they always look at about delivery. You can deliver the thing. So they give you objectives. These are the things, your task. Deliver. We are comfortable. Next month, finance secretary, please let me check the tights. We are too comfortable. Yes. So this is what happened to them. God said no in Deuteronomy 1.6. He says that no, 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 no. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. It is too long. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Because one, you have found, you think that this is, this is it all. This is all, all about where I want you to go. But I, there is a place called Cana for you. Hallelujah. Church, there is a place for us. Ah, let me talk about this premise and before I move on. So when we came here, we told ourselves that we come to spend three years, right? Those, those yeah, 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 yeah. We said <laughs> we said that we come to spend three years. So even this stage, we did it, and at a point in time, it, 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 there, <laughs> there was a big hole here because we thought that it's temporary place for us. We are almost eight years in this premise. Please. P.I.W.C. Don't be comfortable here. Amen. Amen. And then God told them in verse 7 that break camp, break camp and don't stay there, but break camp and advance. That is where I have prom the promise is. Go. When you go, you will see greater things. Hallelujah. Break camp and advance. And then when you break camp and you advance, I, in verse 8, I, the Lord, will have given you a land. This is a gift. He has given. Look, let me give a good example of what happened sometimes in the Bible. A reflection of what happened in the Bible with maybe two or three Bible characters and then we continue. But Sunday, something happened in church. I don't know whether people observed it. We, had, we, we were supposed to evangelize in the street, right? Hey, I saw the pictures and I didn't see myself in the picture. <laughs> I wasn't in there. I'm like, whoa. P.I.W.C., we, we have been unleashed to advance, but we saw that only a few members went to do the rest of us, we, we, we just had a feast and went home. Hmm. Hope those who went, their food, we didn't eat because for me, I took some home. <laughs> I, I hope they were served. Hey! So, I got home and I realized that I brought everything here to my house. I, I, just comfortable with where I am. Even when I've been unleashed, I still stand at where I am because, oh, I mean, I mean, this, this, how many, how many churches have our seats? That's what. <laughs> if it is seat that takes us to have it, like, I mean. <laughs> but break camp and advance. In Genesis 12, 1 to 4, if you can help me read it. No, let's start from Genesis 11, 35. The last, the last verse there, before the 12. Genesis 11, 35 or 36? 35. The last verse in Genesis 11, please. That will help us understand the story. The last verse. Teddy, some. A 
Okay, let me tell you the story. So, Abraham's father, Terah, Yes, good. So the, the story is that they, they go, I think it was a direction or a vision to go to Cana. And then they got to a city where they were so comfortable. What's the name of the city? Heron. They got there and they were so comfortable. They sat there, gave birth. Abraham grew. He had a wife. He so started breeding. He had cattle, sheep, goats, whatever. They were all comfortable. And in chapter 12, verse 1, God said, no, don't be comfortable there. So this is what he, he told them. Yes, now you can read. The Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, mm -hmm. and I will bless you. Mm -hmm. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Amen. Abraham, the commandment or the direction was that, leave that comfortable zone and go to a country. There was no GPS at that time. He just didn't know where he was going, but he, look, when you read verse, verse 3 and verse 2 and 3, chapter 12, verse 2 and 3, it comes, the moving comes with blessing. And he said, that, please project it again. He said that, I will bless you. I will, yes. I will make you into great nation. Did God do that? Did God do that? I will bless you, and I will make your name great. Did God do that? And uh, you will be a blessing. Hallelujah. If you hear the voice of God, yo, it was a theme some years ago, hearing and obeying the voice of God. Thank you, Mr. Steph. Yeah. If you hear and adhere to God's word, it says go, and you go, there is a blessing. And so, in the life of Abraham, they were so, he was so blessed. Why? Because he listened and then he took a step. Church, it's about time. We are too comfortable with our numbers. I don't know whether we are comfortable. When we bought the church, Uncle P, we started buying, we, started, we said we were going to buy 150. It ended up 223 because people started donating left, right. We have 100 and almost 150 something seats here. The expectation is that we should fill up this place. But every Sunday, we are between 80 and 105. 80, 105. We've even seen 53 in this assembly before. We are too comfortable. After hearing the word this year, all the, I, I gave you some of the topic. When brothers and sisters were told to go out and minister the word to those who are lost, some of us were partying, enjoying the food. In fact, the food was good. God bless those who did it. But God says, I will make you a great nation if you go. I will bless you if you go, I will make your name great. Hallelujah. Abraham, if you, whoever takes the Bible, that's the first name. But there were people before Abraham. But Abraham's name, over, it's like the, one of the biggest names. If you go to, you go to the, the Muslim world and you mess up with the name Abraham. Ha, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a great name. Hallelujah. Now, this is what happened. In Hebrews 11, 8. Hebrews 11, 8. That's why he talked about it. Yes, good, 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 good. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to 
a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. Hallelujah. Today, please don't look at this voice talking to you, that voice that doesn't sound like the one you want to hear. Please, it is the word of God. And please listen to it. And I am very sure that through this, God will bless you. Amen. We found out that Abraham was obedient to the voice of God. He departed from his comfort zone. Church, we need to depart from our comfort zone. You are, for example, and let me use my phone, an analyst, right? After five years, you are still an analyst. After 10 years, you are still an analyst. You, you need to advance. You need to. Please, you need to. You might not be the manager, but you should, you should be seen there. Hallelujah. We go to our workplace, we are so comfortable, and then our oh, family, my Christian. Look, at workplace, there's nothing like that. Be part of them. When they are going, go with them. I'm not saying when they are going to do the negative things, but I mean, you, you go to meeting, contribute. Let them see you. Let them hear that this guy is, look, sometimes you hear this American accent, then I open my mouth, it is, whoa, but hey, there's something in it. There, are, there have been meetings that, for some strange reason, I, it's like I, I have a meeting, I could not, they will wait for me. Kofi Kwashi. That is the doing of the Lord. Amen. So life application is that step out in faith, leave behind your comfort zone to follow God's call. The book of Joshua tells us something about break camp and advance with courage. The first one was break camp with faith. This one, break camp and advance with courage. Joshua 1, 1 to 9. Please but read the 9 for me. Joshua 1, 9. Yes. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Mm. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For mm. the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. This is where Joshua, when Abraham died, you see, Joshua was one of the guys, they were 10 called to go and spy. Joshua and Caleb, they were the only two who came with positive news. The rest were negative. Now, when, when Moses died, I'm very sure that this guy was quiet. Because the expectation is that he, he, will, he should take the mantle. But I'm very sure. So in verse 1, God commanded him that, hey, my friend, look, be strong and courageous. Move. In verse 6, God says that be strong and courageous because you will lead those people to inherit the land. I swore to their ancestors to give them. Church leaders, we the leaders, now we have to pull the bull by the horn. This is a British proverb, please. If you don't understand, sit beside him. <laughs> we, we have to, we have to, this one we have to buy first or buy fire, by panda. We have to move. We need to fill up this place, 150 every Sunday. It's nothing to, to, to do. Oh, I, I, it, it is true that we meet and we are 150. And we even have overflow. It is nothing too hard for the Lord. Let me tell you something that happened when we were in um, rally. There is this small church that organized a concert. We call it gospel concert. They invited Chris Tomlin, Jeremy Camp. Actually, that was my first time seeing those artists. Um, they did it at the PNC Arena. That takes about, the concert is about 20,000. But during the game itself, it takes about 18,000. When we got there, the place was filled up. So we were even behind the stage. The, it's a small church that organized it. They have what we call a month of unleashed. During that month, the whole church meets, study together, pray together, and raise funds together. The goal is to win souls. 
And so during the program, I even didn't know, because for me, I heard on the radio, Chris Tomlin is coming to town, so I went there. Enjoyed the music, and then this young pastor took over. He started speaking. Listen, because they had met, prayed, before being unleashed, the pastor did not talk more than 10 minutes. And when there was altar call, the whole floor was filled up. So imagine if, because the pastor said that, oh, we are a very small church. Thank you so much. Invited guests for accepting to come and um, minister for us. We are a small church, but you accepted the call. And I was imagining that if a small church, maybe we Pentecost might be more than them. But look at, they were so bold to invite great artists who will pull the crowd. For me, I didn't know it was a church. I knew Chris Tomlin was coming. I am very sure that those who were others who came, came because of Jeremy Camp, came because of Ted Day. And the place was filled up. But let me use this number. Let's take that one ten. Because the, the whole floor, we were sitting at the rooftop. The whole floor, when the altar call, during the altar call, the whole floor was filled up. I'm like, wow. On our way to going home, we were talking about how God can do simple word. The man did not minister any strange word. Just simple, talking about the love of God and their mission in this world to help those who are lost. That was it. And the whole floor was filled up. P.I. It's about time. P.I. We have to be very courageous. Sometimes when, when leadership comes up with something, we ourselves entangle ourselves. We just put ourselves back to the leash. Oh, we don't have money. Oh, we don't have money. But I am here to tell you that riches comes from the Lord. Amen. So Joshua, in the case of Joshua, um, the, he, let me go through quick. The presence of God gave him strength in, us, uh, in verse 5. In verse 8, which God said that keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Not only day, not only night, not only afternoon. Day and night. So that you may be careful to do everything written in it. And the condition is that then you will be prosperous and successful. Be courageous, church. Wherever you find yourself, be courageous. Look, the word of God says that we are not the tail, but we are what? Don't accept to be a tail. Hallelujah. Look, let this word be part of you that I am the head and not the tail. Meditate on it. Don't accept to be a tail. Those who want to be tails, let them be tails. But you are the head. Hallelujah. Don't look at your color, your skin, your accent like mine. Don't look at your height, your... Maybe you are the peace goer. But... <laughs> Hallelujah. But see yourself as a giant. Amen. So... The second part, whoa, my time. They were empowered to advance. When the Holy Spirit came upon them, the word of God says in Acts 1 8 that, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So last week we had we have a good time with the word. Two young guys came here. Um, they can even told us about our decapolis, 10 cities, every one of us. And with the power of internet, we can speak to people who are elsewhere. Hallelujah. Those of us who have started learning Chinese, it is an opportunity for us to spread the gospel to China from Norcross. Those of you who have started learning, look, we can use AI to do that. You don't need to even learn it. Those of you with those skills, Please, please, it's about time. Make use of that. And the Lord God, because you, you have listened, he will bless you. 
Amen. Sometimes my examples are so wild and I'm afraid to, it will, it will, no, I will keep it. So, at the beautiful gate, empowered, where this man, cripple, wanted to, was looking for money, hands. Peter, John, they look at the man, he says that, hey, brother, for us, we don't have that what you are expecting. But what we have is the name of Jesus. Rise up. That is the power. You, you and I have it. Hallelujah. When somebody is sick, you and I have that power to call the name of Jesus for the person to be healed. Amen. We have it. It's just that some of us, we are, we, we are so comfortable. Well, I'll pray for you. Friday. Was it a Friday or Thursday? You and Steph called me. Oh, Joshua. It was Joshua. Was it Thursday or Friday? Thursday, right? Yeah. Wednesday. It's Thursday. Oh, you were there. Okay. So there is this young guy who used to be with us. He was our keyboardist. To be honest with you, this guy is so talented. Very talented. For some strange reason, something has happened to him. And when I got the call, the time I was talking to Sister Steph, Josh, and the, I think some of the members were there. I don't know. The, the, and they were giving me information about this young guy. At the same time, Brother Eben Sam was also testing me, but I could not see it until I, I was done with the call. They sent it to you. I looked at it and I reflected on the word of God that we heard the Sunday. I'm like, I think God is speaking to the church. God is speaking to us. Maybe this is our project. To, to, through this young guy, if you and I, we are able to snatch him from the power of hell into the kingdom of heaven, that will be good news. So when this cripple went to the church, he was healed and he went there. He was praising God, running. Somebody who has not worked for since he was born. The word of God says that he was running all over. Everybody saw him. So the, based on the word of God that we heard last week, and based on today's that we should break camp and advance, let's take it as a project. Hallelujah. Let's take church. It is about time. Let's deliver ourselves from, 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 from the hands of the evil. And I looked at this young guy, the way he was blessed, and where he is now. Uh, uh, anything can happen to us, my brothers. Anything, look, anything can happen to us. Let's be careful. But we can only make it when we go. We can only receive the blessing when we listen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Life application. Very simple. Then we pray. Is that, please, the comfort zone. You are a high school student. You know yourself that college is not yours. It is fine. It's fine. But please get something. At least get a certificate. Advance a little. Move from high school level. High school certificate is called diploma, right? To another thing. Something. If you are a degree holder, you know that master's is not, your, your level, it's not for you. But at least there is a certification that will push me. Please take that as a church, spiritually, we are comfortable. Some time ago, one of these ladies, the Lord God exposed, showed, like God showed himself to her. She was driving, God showed himself to her. And when she told me, I'm like, wow, I've been a presiding and I've not seen what you have seen, you are seeing. It means God is giving you something. And I'm very sure that there are a lot of members here who have seen God. It's about time you have to move, please. So that you will receive that blessing. Hallelujah. Don't be in the comfort zone for long. Trust in God with faith like Abraham did. And be courageous like Joshua. And I am very sure because whatever God said, 
to Abraham. We are all witness to it. What God said to Joshua, everybody is witness to it. Why not you? The word of God says that those people, they are not too great than us. They are just ordinary like us. And if God has advanced them to the extent that now we use them as reference, someday, somehow, somewhere, somebody is going to use you as reference. May the Lord God bless his word. Amen.